We are against the capital punishment because we are for preserving human dignity in all circumstances. This is based on the deeply held conviction and obligation that arises from the concept of human dignity, also ensuring in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, including its Article 3, which proclaims that everyone has the right to life. The International Observatory of Human Rights travelled to Brussels for the Seventh World Congress against the death penalty. The event took place at the European Parliament and at the conference centre Egmont Palace with one aim, encouraging more countries to abolish the death penalty. More than a thousand people, lawyers, politicians, academics and former death row inmates participated in workshops and plenary sessions to say no. It's the world's leading abolitionist event in terms of its scope and sheer political ambition. The opening ceremony is just about to begin, so let's go and see what's happening. It is an honour for the European Union to host the World Congress against that penalty. And we Europeans, we in the European Union, are proud to be the world's largest space that is free from that penalty. We believe that the response to a crime must never be another crime. We have moved beyond the idea of an eye for an eye, and we believe in justice, not in revenge. It is important to enter into dialogue with these countries to achieve our ultimate goal, the abolition of the universal universal. 60% of the world population live in countries where the death penalty is still applied. Many regions such as Asia, the US and the Middle East are still resisting to abolish it. It is estimated that 993 executions took place in 2017. 144 countries and territories abolished the death penalty in law or in practice. And Africa might be the next abolitionist continent. What's on your wish list for the next few days? What do you hope will be achieved here at the 7th Congress? That some countries take stands against death penalty in the next months because they were uh, present at the World Congress. My wish are also that many activists come back from uh, Brussels with projects, with um, contacts. For example, that there is no, literally no, reliable evidence that death penalty deters crime. Uh, secondly, number of wrongful convictions and it was only DNA technology that made it available uh, to have uh, rock-solid evidence about uh, the ratio of wrongful convictions or about death penalty and discrimination. Who ends up executed? Everywhere in the world it's poor plus some members of various minorities and vulnerable groups. Particularly in relation to the issue I bring to the conference, which is the death penalty issues related to foreign fighters and their dependents, the Congress is the place to have really hard conversations. Because in some ways it's easy for states, particularly abolitionist states, to agree that the death penalty is a bad thing when the victim is sympathetic. And the challenge is when you face victims who are not, people who've been members of non, or non-state actor groups or terrorist organizations. These are not individuals who have a lot of sympathy or that the public is actually willing to support uh, uh, proactive measures by government. But there's an odd paradox that these governments who are abolitionist states are not living up to their obligations in the most, in the hardest cases. Uh, when I was practicing as a lawyer in apartheid South Africa, it was just blacks who were executed. Uh, frankly, the first political prisoner was John Harris, a white person. Uh, so the scary thing is that it was discriminatory and secondly that they were using the death penalty against political activists and I mentioned yesterday how Mandela was getting a death uh, a penalty. The judge wrote his memoirs and said that's what he, he wrote. What happened? The international community contacted the apartheid government and said you can't kill him. So the government phoned the judge and said, don't pass the death penalty. And what a case. The man spends 27 years. He comes out, he leads us into democracy. Yet another argument on why we should give people a chance and not pass the ultimate penalty. 
Victims of the death penalty are not just about those awaiting execution on death row, but the entire family, the wife, the husband, and of course, especially the children. They are all victims. Today, we'll hear from those victims, how they live through this ordeal, the mental, the physical consequences, and how they continue to campaign for the freedom of their loved ones. Uh, my husband's uh, health is a very bad situation. In uh, almost uh, more than one year, he requested for going to hospital, but the, until now is not going. And uh, his weight is uh, 50 kilogram almost, and uh, he needs uh, immediately going to hospital. And uh, but uh, his case is not change. Uh, is the same uh, situation. Is not uh, cancel his uh, death penalty. The Congress also gave voice to former death row prisoners who are now campaigning against the death penalty. You and your husband were both on death row, wrongly convicted, and your husband unfortunately was executed, and you witnessed this execution. We wrote letters every day, and um, when he, they did execute him, we were allowed a 10-minute phone call just prior to the execution. and. Um, that was the end. I was kept in the um, chaplain's office during the execution and just afterwards I asked to go to have some privacy to go into the um, ladies room and I looked in the mirror and there behind me I could see I could see him there and he told me he was okay. J'étais jugé pour délit d'opinion Les seules choses que j'ai fait, que j'ai écrit des slogans et brandé une pancarte qui dit non à la tyrannie, non à la tuerie. You were an executioner for the Virginia State Penitentiary. You executed 62 people. You spent four years in prison yourself, and now you are campaigning for the abolition of the death penalty. Tell me what's happened in your life to bring you all the way around to where you are today. Well, God pulled me through something to get me to something, you know, and to get the message to his people that we don't have to kill one another to prove to one another that killing is wrong. Well, it's been an amazing four days here in Brussels at the 7th World Congress against the death penalty. A small number of countries around the world continue to sentence people and children to death. The number of states carrying out executions is steadily decreasing year on year, so we definitely know that events like this are making a difference. But thousands of people still remain on death row awaiting execution in prisons around the world, and many hundreds, including children, are still executed in a minority of states every year.